everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you are new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Marina. I am a certified lash tech based in Toronto, Canada, and I like making lashing videos. And guys, I'm back making my voiceovers again. I've been really busy. I actually caught COVID and I was also on vacation. So the last three videos, two videos were just time lapses, but I'm here back and sharing some tips with you guys that have helped me. And I've actually altered some tips um, quite recently. Uh, with doll eye style so i wanted to share that with you guys before i jump into any of my videos though you guys know that i always put a disclaimer anything i'm sharing with you guys is completely subjective to what i like to do so take it with a grain of salt if it doesn't work for you i encourage everybody to do more research look at more video creators uh read articles because what works for me might not work for you and that's totally okay so um yeah but hopefully in some type of way you can take something away from this video so today we are going to be talking about doll eye specifically in that style and um t little tips that kind of helped me lash in this style because i've had to um kind of flip-flop between different methods because i find that i wasn't achieving the symmetry that i really wanted to and so we're gonna hop into that and i'm also gonna talk about some ways to allow beginners to lash faster so talking about lashing faster and my beginner's tip um i would start with sporadic lashing now what is sporadic lashing it's basically lashing um through the eye but not in an organized way so you're not gonna be doing a, like i know some people do okay we're gonna lash one eye and then once we're done one eye we'll start to the next or like me i go from outer corner inner corner inner corner outer corner and so on and so that i lash a hundred percent of the eyelashes but if you're a beginner, sometimes it can be really hard to get 100% of those lashes, especially if you have, um, you're just starting off and you have a paying client and maybe you don't know them as well and you don't want them lying there for that long. Well, you can sporadically lash and a way to help yourself with this is to map out your legs on the under iPad. This way, maybe oh you can fill in the inner corner on the right eye and then hop onto the left eye and do the center of the eye or the outer corner and you can just kind of eyeball using your mirror to look at the lash line i don't know if you guys have that but um if you guys are interested it's listed in the description box all the tools i'm using are listed in the description box below but uh, you can use that mirror to really see where you need to lash more of mine is a godsend i use it all the time when i'm trying to uh sporadically lash if a person has a lot of eyelashes or i'm in a rush you can use the under eye mirror and just see okay this is where i need to lash more of and it just allows you to get more surface area so that let's say in an emergency your client needs to get up and leave for some reason she won't look as uh, crazy because she has lashes kind of as evenly as possible kind of spread out or all around around the eye rather than having these huge gaps where you were, weren't able to lash so i hope that makes sense with you guys it's basically just scattering the sizes all around the eyes as you lash so that you cover more surface area without her looking nuts if she needed to leave and so my second one is three-way lashing and i didn't know what to call this so i made up that name but basically that's how i'm lashing in this video uh as you can see i started with the inner corner and then center of the eye and then outer corner and i'm kind of rotating through that from eye to eye so this method is used because i am trying to create the best amount of symmetry at the end of the video you'll notice that it's not like super symmetrical and this is because when you're isolating you're basically pushing all of these natural lashes to go like a certain way and so sometimes um they're not in their natural placement and so after the lashes kind of settle in maybe an hour later or after like even a few minutes after the client is blinking a lot and those lashes kind of set into the place where 
they naturally sit the set comes out a lot cleaner and i have seen this firsthand because i did my friend's lashes when we went on vacation together and at the very end of her set it still had a little like a few gaps and it didn't look clean like i wanted to but when i saw her at the airport like a day later they were all symmetrical and super clean and even so yeah take with the result at the end like with a grain of salt just remember it's gonna look so much more organized and clean so yeah that's something that i was trying to achieve was the symmetry more so than the cleanliness um although i do really focus on having a clean top lash line so that it looks even however this is a wet set it's a mascara set it's not supposed to look so orderly anyway we want texture we want natural placement uh we kind of want unevenness it adds to the natural effect of how lashes usually sit anyway but yeah so this three-way method is to achieve the best symmetry possible and that is why i was trying to do it and using my under eye mirror i see if the middle part is symmetrical um, something to help you guys lash a little faster that could be using your ring finger as you can see in this video I am using my ring finger a lot this is to push away the large hairs to the side far enough so that if there's any baby hairs that are next to the eyelash that I'm trying to isolate they kind of lean to one side making it easier for me to get those tweezers in so that I can push those little hairs out to the side or if even if it's like you know two um fully grown adult lashes i can push them to the side and it just helps me i find it a lot easier and allows me to isolate that lash um to the point where it's safe so that none of the neighboring lashes are going to be damaged in that process and yeah and my last tip for you guys is only using three lengths for doll eye maybe four if um Let's say they're going for a really long length and you're scared that the inner corner lashes might not be able to hold the lash, um, the lashes that the client may want. So let's say it's like a really, really long length and you are like, okay, maybe I'll go down an extra length just to be sure for the inner corners. Then maybe I might introduce four. However, for this set, I only use tw 10 to 12. Um, this is so that I can one map it out a lot easier so that there's a lot more symmetry for me I found that when I'm using multiple lengths maybe too many lengths it gives more room for error meaning that uh, one I might not look as I guess I don't know something like symmetrical the symmetry is just off because there's just so many lengths you're trying to fit in there also, you have to remember everyone's eyes are shaped differently. And so I find that if you have never seen this client before, like for me, this client in the video is like my first time meeting her. I didn't know what her eye shape was going to be because in person it could look a lot different in photos. I um, kind of found that having three lengths is like a nice sweet spot. It's like a nice safe amount of lengths so that you can achieve a sy symmetrical shape but also like prep for your client beforehand without getting too stressed out so i hope that makes sense um i found that the definitely just picking three lengths have definitely helped me lash l a lot faster especially for sporadic lashing three lengths is like pretty good so yeah um i really hope that you guys like this video if you guys are wondering when i say d and double d curl i mentioned this in my other videos but i say d and double d because at the very outer corners i always always use the a curl above the main curl so if it's c curl all throughout the eye then i do d curl on the outer if it's d curl on the out uh fully through the normal what am I saying? If it's D curl through the center of the eye and inner corners, then I will do double D on the outer corners. This allows you to give a nice lift and as there's fallout, it won't look as droopy. So thank you guys so much for constantly supporting me. Um, it means a lot and I'm happy that I can come back and, you know, give some tangible advice and actually speak into the microphone and be kind of more engaging than just doing a time-lapse video 
so thank you thank you thank you if you have any questions please please comment down below i always am curious and always would like to know and if you guys have any tips for me that would be great as well and if this video was helpful in any way please give it a thumbs up it would mean the world to me and um yeah i post every sunday around 6 15 thank you so much for your constant support guys and i will see you next week bye